Hello, welcome back. The title here is called Practice with Proportions. This is part one. You might say, why are we doing practice with proportions? Haven't we already been doing practice with proportion in the last lessons? Of course, that is true. These problems will have slightly larger numbers, which will cause us to do a little bit more work. But really the main reason we have extra practice here is because as we solve these proportions, notice that they're all equations. So it's really like the first time we're getting exposed to how to solve an equation. And I really wanna give you extra practice with that because the idea of solving equations actually follows you throughout all of math. So we're learning two things here. We're learning how to solve proportions, which is just a type of equation. And then of course, we're learning how, the rules of how to solve equations. So let's take a look at our uh, first example in this lesson. What if we have the proportion, which is just an equation, one third or one as compared to three uh, is equal to 15 as compared to x. So x is the unknown number. What we're basically asking ourselves is, if we have the relationship one as it compares and relates to the number three, then if we have separately the number 15, what number do we have to have down here to have the same relationship? We also call that the same ratio. So kind of another way to think about it, we've been talking about the, the example here of boys to girls in a room or in a classroom. If we have one boy for every three girls, then if we encounter 15 boys, how many girls should we also have in the group to, in order to have the same ratio or relationship as what we have on the other side? Now, in order to solve this, what we have to do is get the, the unknown number x by itself on one side of an equal sign. Any equation, that's all we're trying to do. But the letter x here is just a, a placeholder for a number and it's on the bottom of the fraction. So the first thing we have to do is move it to the top. So let's rewrite what we have, 15 over x here. And um, we need to get this x up to the top. So this is dividing by x, it's 15 dividing by x. We always do the opposite. So in order to bring it upstairs, we're gonna multiply by x. And if we do it to this side, we have to do the same thing to the other side of the equation. All right, now we're multiplying on, by x on both sides. We can write that as x over one because anything can be written as itself over one. So what did we have here on the left? On the left, we have two fractions. On the top, we have x times one, which will just be x. And on the bottom, we have one times three, which is three. This is just multiplying fractions. The idea that there's a letter x here doesn't really change anything. You still multiply the numerators. x times one is just x because anything times one is itself. And one times three is three. Now on the right hand side, notice what's actually going to happen. These x's, you have one in the top and one in the bottom, and they're going to cancel. You're going to learn that when you multiply fractions, if you end up having the same thing in the top as you also have in the bottom, they cancel because they divide away. So to show it a little more clearly, if we multiply the tops, 15 times x will just be 15x. We can't really do the multiplication, so we write it right next to each other here. And then x times 1 is x. But look what we have here on the right hand side. Here we have an x on the top and an x on the bottom. The same thing I pointed out to you here. And we can cancel them. And the idea of canceling is not magical. It's not mystical. It's just that when you have something on the top of a fraction and also on the bottom, they're dividing away. Three divided by three is one. Five divided by five is one. X divided by X, because X is the same thing, is just one. So they kind of disappear there. Uh, well, they basically divide away to one and the one disappears. So what do we have here? On the left, we have uh, x divided by three, and on the right, we just simply have 15 left over because the x is canceled away. Now, we have x on the top, but we have now still have it divided by three. So we want to get x by itself. It's divided by three, so we need to do the opposite, which is multiplying by three on the left, and then we'll multiply by three on the right. Now on the right, it's quite simple because we just have 15 times three. All right, if you go off to the uh, separate sheet of paper, 15 times two, you'll remember is 30. 15 times three, you could just go off to the side, multiply, you'll get that as 45. So 15 times three is 45. Now on the left-hand side, notice what we have. We're multiplying by three, but we can of course write it as three over one. Whoops, not three over three, three over, three over one uh, there. And we have the same sort of thing going on. We have uh, a three on the top and a three on the bottom. Let's go ahead and go through it. Three times X on the top will be three X. And on the bottom, one times three will be three. But you see, you still have the three on the top and the three on the bottom. So they go away, they cancel, right? You can cancel them at this step also. You can cancel before the multiplication. Here I'm just showing you kind of every little step here. We're doing it after the multiplication there. So the only thing left is x. 
and you have it equal to 45. That is the final answer. We're trying to find out what is the unknown value of x. It has to be 45. So let's go and um, just rewrite the proportion. We had it as 1 over 3, or 1 as compared to 3 is equal to 15 as compared to x. And we already just found that x is 45. Does this make sense? Well, what we're saying is if this is boys to girls, a ratio of boys to girls, then there's three times as many girls as boys. So if we encounter 15 boys, there has to be three times as many girls. And of course, that is three times as many. 15 times three is 45. So this is the only number that works. This problem, you could probably just look at it and get the answer. I know that a lot of you are looking at this thinking, I, I can see the answer. I don't need to do all that stuff. But you're going to have to trust me. Very soon, we're going to solve equations that you can't do in your mind. You, nobody can. I mean, I can give you an equation right now that none of, nobody could solve in their mind. So we have to learn the rules. And the rules are to get the variable by itself using the opposite, doing the opposite operation, to get it by itself on one side. That's how we solve it. All right, problem number two. We're going to change letters to W as it compares to 24 is equal to 4 over 6. So we're saying the, relation, the relation, relationship 4 as compared to 6 is the same as the relationship between W as it compares to 24. What does W have to be to maintain the same relationship, the same proportion there? So on the left, we want to get W by itself. Let's rewrite everything. W over 24 is equal to 4 over 6. How do we get rid of the 24? Well, it's divided by 24, so we'll have to multiply by 24, and then we'll have to multiply by 24 over here. Now, we have fractions here, so it's a little easier just to write it as 24 over 1. So we have to do this arithmetic here with the fractions here. Now, the 24 times the w will be 24w. We can't really multiply it, so you just write it next to each other. And the 1 times the 24 will be 24. And then 4 times 24 on the left, you might need to go off to the side and do that, 24 times 4. 4 times 4 is 16, 2 times 4 is 8, and then you have a 9 here. That's going to be 96 right here. And then 6 times 1 is 6. But look at what happens on the left. Because we multiply by 24, now we have 24 divided by 24, which means they go away. And so we have w equals, here we have 96 divided by 6. Let's go over and figure out what 96 divided by 6 is. 96 divided by 6. It can go one time. 6 times 1 is 6. The difference here is 3. Drag down a 6, and 6 times something is 36. That's going to be 6 times 6 is 36, remainder 0. So it goes 16 times. 96 divided by 6 is 16. And w equals 16 is the final answer. So what we're basically saying is 4, as it relates to 6 or compares to 6, the only number that works up here is 16 uh, as it relates to 24. So 16 is less than 24, just like 4 is less than 6. And the relationship between the numbers are the same because the ratios are the same. All right, making good progress. I told you we're just doing more of them because I want you to get in the idea that every time you solve an equation, you have to do the opposite and you're trying to get the variable by itself. Let's take a look. 4, as it compares to 10, is equal to some unknown number h as it compares to 25. Right? So we know it has to be less than 25 because 4 is less than 10. It has to be the same relationship. What do we do? So let's rewrite the problem. 4 as it compares to 10 is h compared to 25. Now, we want to get h by itself. So we're dividing by 25. We must then do the opposite, multiply. And if we multiply by 25, we have to do the same thing on both sides. And we'll write it as 25 over 1. All right, on the left, mul multiply the numerators. 24 times 4 is 100. 1 times 10 is 10. And then what's going to happen here, I'm, I'm going to start to, I don't want to say skip steps, but I want you to see what's really going on here. We could multiply these. h times 25, you get 25h. And then you'll have 25 times 1 on the bottom. But I want you to start to see that even before you do the fraction multiplication, when you see the same thing on the top and the bottom, you can cancel those uh, kind of ahead of time. So the 25 here is going to cancel with the 25 here. Yes, we could multiply. You would get something that looks like this. Uh, we had 24w over 24, and they canceled anyway. We're just going to cancel ahead of time, and then realize that what's going to pop out on the right-hand side is going to be h on the top and 1 on the bottom. h divided by 1 
anything divided by one is itself. So all you have is H. Because it, whatever H is, if you divide it by one, you still have H and the 25s are now gone. So all you have is H here. Now what is uh, uh, 100 divided by 10? It's 10 and we can flip it around to say that H is equal to 10. This is the final answer to the problem, all right? So we're saying four as it compares to 10 is the same relationship as 10 as it compares to 25. So 10, the ratio of 10 to 25 is the same as four as it compares to 10. So as we solve these problems and we do enough of them, I'm going to start to do that process of cancellation a little bit. I don't wanna say I'm skipping a step, but I have to teach you how to cancel properly. So let's say we have six divided by y is equal to 15 divided by 20. We wanna solve this equation for y, this proportion for y. So y is on the bottom. We cannot isolate it if it's on the bottom, so we have to move it to the top. First, we have six over y. We have 15 over 20. And the very first thing we need to do is bring y upstairs. So multiply by y, multiply by y. We have fractions here, so we can write it as y over one, like this. Now on the left-hand side, what's going to happen? Same thing. It'll be y times six or six y, and then it'll just be y times one or y on the bottom. It will be the same situation as 24 times w over 20 where they're gonna cancel anyway. The y's, even before you do the multiplication, you can see it's gonna cancel either way, so we'll just cancel it ahead of time. And on the left, we're just gonna have a six divided by a one. Because the y divided by one, y also gives us a one. When you multiply by one, nothing happens. So the only thing left here is six divided by one. And so on the left, you just have six. And on the right, you have 15 times y on the top and 20 times one, which is 20 on the bottom. All right, next, we have a 20 on the bottom. We need to get rid of that. And then lastly, we will divide by the 15. So we have a division by 20 going on right here. The next step is we're gonna multiply by 20 to get rid of the 20 on the bottom, right? We can write this as 20 over one. Here I can write it over one if I want, but I don't need to because I'm just multiplying numbers. Now what is 20 times six? You can just count 20, 40, 60, 80, 100, 120. And so the answer we get on the left is 120. And on the right, same thing, I can multiply the 15 times the 20. I mean, I could totally do that. Or I could just recognize, and then I, I can divide by 20 and, and I would get a simplified thing on as I do that. But you can see that it's gonna be way easier to just cancel the 20s ahead of time. Instead of taking 20 times 15, getting the result, and then dividing by 20, to figure out what to do, I'm just gonna recognize that I have a 20 and a 20, I'm gonna kill it, get rid of it, it cancels. The only thing I have left here is 15 times y, and I'm dividing by one, which does nothing, so it's just 15y, all right? Now finally, what do I have to do? Let me rewrite where we're at. We have 120 is 15 times y. Here I'm multiplying by 15, 15 times y. How do I do the opposite? to get rid of the 15. I'm gonna divide both sides by 15. And if I divide both sides by 15, what's going to happen? Well, I have a 15 on the top and a 15 on the bottom. That's gonna go away. And on the left, I still have to do that division process here. So on the right, I just have y. Y is the only thing left. What is 120 divided by 15? 120 divided by 15 works out to be exactly eight. And if you're not sure about that, just go over you know, to a sideboard, 120 divided by uh, 15. It doesn't go into 12, so you have to, you really just have to start multiplying to figure out how many times it goes to 120. 15 times 8. 8 times 5 is 40. And you have 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, and it exactly equals 120. So y is equal to 8, and that is the final answer. All right, next problem. Now you see why I'm trying to do so many of these, because I want it to be second nature. I want you to look at this and know exactly what to do. What about k? over five is the same relationship as 12 over 15, the same proportion, the same ratios are set equal. I wanna solve for K, K is already on top, so all I need to do to get it by itself is to multiply both sides by five because I'm dividing by five here. So we'll do the opposite. We'll rewrite everything so we don't get confused. All right, and then we'll multiply on the left by five and we'll multiply on the right also by five. We'll go ahead and do it over one like this. On the left, you can see what's gonna happen. Even if we multiply the top and bottom, all that's gonna happen is the fives are gonna cancel anyway, so we'll just cancel them ahead of time. And on the right-hand side, 
uh, on, well, let's back up. On the left, we'll have a k divided by 1, which is just k. So all we have left is k. We've achieved our goal. On the right, the numerator is 12 times 5 is 60, and the denominator is 15. So now you have to figure out what is 60 times 15, and that works out to be uh, 4. And if you're not sure about that, just grab off to the side. you got to figure out how many times it goes in. So 15 times 4, 5 times 4 is 20, and then 4 plus 2 is 60. And so you can see it does divide and go four times. So all we did is multiply both sides by 5. That cancels the 5, leaves k by itself. On this side, we multiplied the fractions and simplified. That's it. So it's just fraction arithmetic as usual. All right. Last problem. Let's do it right here. Let's say we have... Uh, 5 divided by 2 is equal to 15 divided by c. Again, the variable c is what we're seeking, and it's in the bottom. So let's rewrite the problem. I don't like to scribble over my problem statement. Then you can't follow what's going on. So let's, let's bring c upstairs. That's always the first thing we need to do. We multiply the right by c, and then if we do that, we have to multiply the left by c. Now on the right-hand side, you can see you have a C and a C on the top and the bottom of the fractions that are multiplied, so you can just cancel it. So on the right-hand side, all you're going to have is 15 left over because it's 15 divided by 1. That's just 15. On this side, C times 5 will be 5C, and 1 times 2 is 2. We can't really multiply the 5 times a C, so we just write it as 5C. When they're written next to each other like this, they're multiplied. How do we isolate C? First step, let's move the 2 over here. And then lastly, we'll get rid of that 5. How do we move the 2? Let's rewrite what we have. 5C over 2 is 15. Let's multiply. Since this is divided by 2, we're going to multiply by 2. And we'll make a 2 over 1 over here. On the left-hand side, you can see what's going on here. We have a 2 on the top and a 2 on the bottom. So the 2 just cancels with the 2. It's gone now. And all that I really have left on the left side is 5C, and it's divided by 1, which means it doesn't really do anything. Still 5C. 15 times 2 is 30. So I have 5C is equal to 30. So let me rewrite what we have here. 5C is equal to 30. How do we get C by itself? We've multiplied by 5. How do we do the opposite? The opposite of multiplication is division. Right? And the reason we're dividing is because now we see we have a 5 on the top and a 5 on the bottom. They cancel away. So all we have left is a C on the left. And what is 50, I'm sorry, 30 divided by 5? 30 divided by 5 is 6. And so we get an answer of C is equal to 6. So there's several steps through, but I'm hoping that by now you can see that the steps are bulletproof and they're very repeatable. But you just have to get practice seeing it because nobody is good at this when they first learn it. But after seeing it a little while, I'm hoping that you can see the logic in what we're doing. We want to get W by itself, for instance. We have divided by 24 here, so we have to do the opposite. We multiply by 24 on both sides. We have a 24 on the top and the 24 on the bottom, which end up canceling. Of course, we've multiplied first here, but we could just cancel ahead of time. So we have gotten the W by itself as we expect. On the right-hand side, we're just multiplied by the 24 as a fraction and get the answer, and now we know what the variable is equal to. If you solve a problem where the unknown value variable is on the bottom, then the very first step is to bring it to the top. And the way you do that is multiply both sides by the variable itself. And then once we get to this step, we had uh, 5c over 2. We had to get rid of the 2 by doing the opposite of division, multiplying by 2. Then we got to this step. And to, get to, to unpack and get c by itself here, we do the opposite of multiplication, which is dividing by 5. So you see, all you're doing is you're, it's like a present. And inside of the innermost box of the present is the variable. And you have to unwrap the layers to get to the variable. And you have to do them by doing the opposite operation. If you see multiplication, you have to do division. If you see division, you'll do multiplication. Later, we will solve equations with addition and subtraction. And you can guess what you're going to do. If you see addition, you'll have to do subtraction. If you see subtraction, you'll have to do addition. So we're always doing the opposite here. I really would like you to solve all of these. And please, please do. Follow me on to the next lesson and conquer those problems as well. This is a critically important lesson because we're learning how to solve proportions, but we're also learning how to solve equations.